Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Gobi's first FitWell webinar. My name is Jason Franken. I'm director of the consulting group here at Gobi. And uh, again, I'd like to welcome all of you. Uh, for your benefit, today's session is being recorded and will be made available via email uh, following completion. Uh, it also will be available for download off of the Gobi website. Please feel free to share with any colleagues or coworkers uh, who may not be able to attend today. Today's session will be about 45 minutes long. Uh, we have left uh, plenty of time for questions at the end. Please feel free to share those questions via the chat feature in the webinar, and we will field those uh, following completion. <clears throat> in this webinar today, Gobi's FitWell ambassadors, Allie Goldstein and Aaron Vicella, will explain the FitWell certification system, highlight the benefits of getting certified, outline the requirements for the program, and provide you with any strategies that may help you to improve your results. <clears throat> Here at Gobi, we feel like we have a unique perspective on the FitWell program and wellness programs in general. Um, our position is both a, a data platform for commercial real estate and a consulting uh, service provider. Uh, put us in a position to use both big data and the uh, pieces of these different programs like FitWell to help clients to uh, achieve their ESG goals and move their programs forward. Today during the session we'll be reviewing FitWell but also touching on some of these other programs and the overlapping synergies between them. Hi everyone, this is Erin. Ali and I are very excited to present FitWell on behalf of Gobi. We hope you leave this webinar feeling just as passionate as we are about this growing movement taking over our real estate sector. So the vision of FitWell, their overall goal was to create a system that could be used easily by anyone to ensure that a building is operating in the best way for everyone, whether that be the occupants or the surrounding community. They do this through their certification system by outlining clear strategies that promote different aspects of health and well-being in the workplace and home through the design and operation of the building. FitWell currently has two certification systems, one for workplace and the other for multifamily residential. These systems provide over 55 different strategies, each of which are related to a health impact category. The FitWell certification system has no prerequisites. FitWell understands that the implementation of any of the strategies in their rating system will work to improve occupant health and productivity in different ways, offering freedom for property to decide what is best for them and their tenants. FitWell was developed through a collaboration with the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the General Service Administration. This combines the CDC's mission to protect the health and safety of Americans with the GSA's understanding of constructing and managing real estate. These two created a certification system that's focused on using the built environment to improve public health and well-being. The Center for Active Design is now the operator of FitWell. They're responsible for third-party certifications and for overseeing future development. FitWell really relies on its ambassadors and champions to spread the word about FitWell and to be the drivers for change around health and well-being in the environment. Ambassadors such as Ali and myself are individual leaders and active participants in FitWell's healthy building movement. We effectively use FitWell's strategy and portal to help companies track their progress and obtain certification. Champions are companies who commit to applying FitWell design and operation strategies to a portion or the entirety of their real estate portfolio. By doing so, they're demonstrating industry, industry leadership and commitment to advancing the building industry to support and promote health. In 2014, all FitWell components, including strategies, scoring algorithms, and the portal were tested. 89 buildings were piloted, all of which were owned or managed by the GSA, the CDC, and the City of New York. 61% of those buildings were able to receive a FitWell certification. Those who were not eligible for certification were still able to use FitWell as a guideline to implement strategies wherever they could.
Fitwell is unique in the way that it was designed to be implemented across a portfolio of buildings. There are multiple building types under the workplace sector, including multi-tenant, single-tenant, and commercial interior. The hope is that portfolios with either workplaces or homes, the indoor environments where we spend most of our time, will be able to apply these strategies and have a large effect on their occupants and surrounding communities. The Fitwell portal is designed for you to track all of your properties within the portal and then to go in and select the strategies that you're already achieving at those properties. This allows you to benchmark the properties against each other and identify those properties who would make a good candidate for certification, as well as find those who might need a little tender love and care when it comes to their wellness programs. Through their research, Fitwell has identified seven of the most important health impact categories that can be affected through building design and operations. These include impacting community health, reducing morbidity, morbidity and absenteeism, supporting social equality for vulnerable populations, instilling feelings of well-being, providing healthy food options, promoting occupant safety, and increasing physical activity. The strategies are given points based on one, how many of these health impact categories they help to promote and the strength of the scientific evidence backing them. The strategies are then broken up into 12 sections related to different aspects of buildings and the surrounding environment. These 12 sections are proven to be the most important for impacting human health and wellness in the workplace. This chart here shows the associated number of points assigned to the strategies within each of those sections for a total of 144 points. So as we mentioned before, there are two rating systems, the multifamily and the workplace. We're showcasing here a scorecard from each of them. The themes are the same throughout, there are, but there are slight differences in the strategies within them and then the point allocations. Another aspect to dive into is that Fitwell allows for alternate compliance and not applicable with some strategies. So alternate compliance means that the intent of the strategy can be met through another means than the one that they may have set out to. So an example of this is in the below workspaces, providing views of nature for a majority of the building workplaces. If you're not able to provide views of nature but can supplement that, with adding plants to the windowsills or to your workspace, you can still earn full credit for that. Another option is the not applicable. This means that the strategy can't be applied and put in place, but the lack of having that strategy isn't necessarily a bad thing. So our example here is a smoke-free outdoor space. If you don't have an outdoor space, you can't make it smoke-free, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So they'll give you full credit for that. So facilities can earn one of three ratings for Fitwell. The first is the one-star rating with a minimum of 90 points allocated to it. To earn a two-star, you need to hit 105 points, and for the top rating of three stars, you need to hit 125 total points. Allie and I have been integrating Fitwell into our space here at Gobi, and we wanted to highlight a few of our favorite Fitwell strategies, going back to the views of nature. This is my little jungle corner, where we don't necessarily have views of nature, as you can see the building in the window, but we can supplement that by adding plants that I try to keep alive. <laughs> Another one is that our building offers subsidized gym memberships for their tenants, which is a great way for us to get a quick workout in before work or set up team fitness classes to further develop our health and well-being policy here at Gobi. Now we are going to discuss the importance of Fitwell, how it can impact the workspace, and what it means for business. Fitwell is designed to be both highly effective and cost effective. Fitwell is meant to be an accessible program that has the same fee for all participants, no matter square footage or portfolio type. The registration fee is $500 with a one-time 
certification fee of $6,000. In addition, there are capital expenses and soft costs depending on which strategies your team wants to achieve. Those who become FitWell champions, as discussed earlier, who commit to six or more buildings being certified in their portfolio can receive a discounted rate. There is an actual need for business. Employers are well aware of the impact health-related costs have on their bottom line. Productivity losses related to health cost U.S. employers over $225 billion annually. And in a survey conducted by FitWell, 49% of all building owners said they are willing to pay more for buildings demonstrated to have a positive impact on their occupant health. And even McKinsey has predicted that wellness is the next trillion dollar industry. Fifty-two percent of all millennials said living or working in a healthy environment is influential to their personal health, compared with 47 percent of Gen Xers and 41 percent of baby boomers. As millennials become the largest generation in the workforce, FitWell can be an, an important tool that can help businesses attract and retain talent. With more demand of a healthier work environment, health and wellness is becoming the standard and therefore expected to be implemented in the workspace. Tenants are more likely to consider buildings with an environmental, social, and government governance programs and certification. Tenants are also expect better air quality, modern cleaning practices, energy efficiency, and an overall management group that is attuned to the tenant's needs. Another great benefit of FitWell is that it creates a system that delivers a standardized methodology, which addresses ESG as a whole and the wellness experience as a subset of it throughout the portfolio. Let's review employee sick days and revenue. There are more than 5.6 million commercial buildings in the United States with 120 million employees who spend over eight hours per day at their jobs. Workplaces present multiple health risks to employees, such as increasing exposure to indoor pollutants and discouraging or preventing physical activity during work hours. Beyond the individual health benefits, fostering a healthy work environment can also result in decreased healthcare costs and increased productivity. When an employee is absent from work due to health-related reasons, this is affected 3% per year with, and costs the employer over $2,000 per employee annually. And how does FitWell contribute to your ESG, ESG strategy as a whole, you might ask? Well, participating in FitWell contributes to a more robust health and wellness governance model. Operational aspects of, it, of FitWell can minimize the impact on the local community, and the social aspects of FitWell contribute to your ESG strategy by making occupants feel happier, which leads to a more productive, loyal, and creative work environment. Certifications will improve standing in disclosure programs such as GRUS. Wellness programs are the only components that can be double counted for GRUS purposes when you're reporting on a building that already has an operational certification. Now I'm sure you're wondering what are some of the other wellness programs? Well, there is one other and it's called WELL. WELL uses best practices in design and construction along with evidence-based health and scientific research to create buildings meant to support human health and well-being. FitWell and WELL do have the same end goal, which is to positively impact the health and well-being of the employees and the tenants within their buildings, but the way they accomplish this is a little different. A great comparison we've heard made by an industry leader is that WELL is focused on the medical science and the individual level of comfort with a medical-based research backing. FitWell's focus is on the public health sector of wellness on a population-based scale. So we're going to run through a case study here of our building in downtown Chicago to give you a sense of what it looks like to certify under these two systems. 
So as you can see, one of the big differences is cost. This is because Fitwell has a flat rate fee for registration and certification costs, regardless of project types or sizes. Well registration, certification, and performance verification costs are determined by the square footage of the area being certified. They have preset costs per square foot for each of these different pieces. Another aspect that varies is the performance verification requirement that Well has. So Well performs on-site inspections and testing to verify that the building conditions required for certification are really being met. Now I would like to outline the FITWELL process. First comes the assessment process, which includes building interviews, site plan reviews, report development, recommendations, and the scorecard is completed in order for the FITWELL team to benchmark your portfolio. As soon as a project is submitted for certification, the FITWELL team begins its review process, which can take up to four to five weeks. When the re review is complete, a review report is sent back to the team, which details any additional documentation or clarification needed. Once any clarifications from the initial review report are resolved, a final review report is provided back to the project team, which includes the final numerical score with its associated star rating, an outline scorecard, and a certificate. If your team is unsure on which properties to submit for, cert for certification, an ambassador from GOBI can work with your team to determine the most qualified properties for certification. So we hope all of you are wondering if your building is a good candidate for FitWell. And although there are no right answers to these questions, certain answers will open doors for you to consider certain strategies. So where is your building located? If you think high walkability and close proximity to public amenities, there are quite a few strategies around these ideas. How old is your building? Has it been recently remodeled? Is it designed with occupant comfort in mind? Think amenities such as a gym, private spaces, break areas. Has your building been awarded any green certification such as a LEED certification? These have a lot of overlapping best practices and policies in indoor air quality related to smoking and pest management. And the last one is, do you have cafeterias, cafes, snack bars, and do they have a standard for healthy and safe environmentally responsible practices? Fitwell values this quite a bit and it does offer a lot of points, so it's something to look for in your properties. Okay, great, well thank you so much, Aaron and Allie, for that very detailed breakdown of Fitwell and Well. Um, <clears throat> now we'll have some time for questions and we've actually received uh, a number of questions, so we'll start to go through these one by one. Please, attendees, please feel free to continue to submit questions. We will uh, answer as many as time permits. And, of course, you can always follow up with our team uh, following today's webinar by emailing us at info at gobyinc.com. <clears throat> so our first question, is Fitwell only for the United States? Uh, that's a good question. And um, the Straightforward answer is no, it is not limited to the U.S. Um, the bulk of the certifications so far have been primarily in the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom, uh, but there are also ambassadors and champions located in um, a number of other countries as well. I think overall they are represented by uh, 12 different countries at this point in time. Next question. If I manage an office campus with three buildings, is there a fee per building or is it only one lump fee for the entire campus? Um, there is a, a discounted rate for six or more buildings if you are certifying um, that amount, but yes, there's an individual certification fee of 5,500 per building up in, with less than six. And I believe that discount that they're talking about there is linked in some way to becoming a champion. 
um, which is a fairly straightforward process. And the folks at Fitwell are very accommodating and, and helpful when it comes to uh, entities that are interested in, in getting that status of champion. Okay, our next question, <clears throat> uh, actually along the same lines, um, the the fee structure, is it a one-time fee only or is there a renewal fee? So the certific or the certification fee, that six thousand, that's a one time fee, but to register for the portal, the five hundred dollars, that's every year that you want your building in the portal. So to be clear, the portal is Fitwell's version of a, a benchmarking tool for their program. So the idea, as Aaron discussed, is that you can take a, a group of buildings, one or more, um, put load them into the Fitwell portal, and then use the tools that are Fitwell specific, so again about those health and wellness concepts, to figure out which of your buildings uh, are good candidates for Fitwell, um, or also um, kind of track them over time. So the $500 fee is almost like an annual subscription fee right. for each year you use the portal. Mm -hmm. The certification fee is a one-time fee, and that has no recertification. Correct. Um, yep. As of now. Not as of now, yeah. Correct. Okay, good. Let's see. Um, another question was, uh, how long does the overall process take, just to reemphasize our timeline? So the review process for Fitwell takes approximately four to five weeks, but right now our estimation with um, working with your team could take the entire process, if you choose to work with Gobi, could take eight to 10 weeks with um, receiving that documentation from your team, client engagement, or excuse me, tenant engagement, everything along those lines. Um, so eight to 10 weeks is the entire process. In an ideal setting. In an, yeah. Every building is different. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Um, next question. Uh, this is a good one. Do you? No, they're all good questions. <laughs> Do you recommend doing both well and fit well? Why or why not? I would say if you can, yes. I mean, they like we said, they touch on different aspects of well-being. Um, fit well is more for the community inside and outside the building and offers a little bit more straightforward way of getting that, where well is if you're really going to dive in to those individual spaces, test the air quality, test the water quality. So they don't overlap in a sense. So they do make sense to do together, and that just makes your health and well-being module in your portfolio that much stronger. I know our audience is fairly diverse today, uh, a good mix of um, – asset management, property management, some engineers, um, et cetera. So depending on your drivers, whether ownership is requiring certain programs to be met, we've seen that in certain cases, uh, or if this is sort of a homegrown initiative that's coming from within, um, you may see that doing them simultaneously um, minimizes the work if there's a, a desire to do both. You may also see that Fitwell is maybe a good entry way into the wellness um, sphere because of its uh, maybe simplicity and, and, and maybe the differences in cost. Um, so there's there's some different factors to be to be considered there. Okay, next question: <clears throat> Can any applicable building be certified regardless of property age? And along those lines. What are some challenges that you see for older or historic buildings? Right, so our reason for bringing that up is that we find that the older buildings aren't necessarily designed with health and well-being ideas in mind. So that would be like the fitness centers or, you know, the stairwells. Stairwells, yeah. It's, there are just certain things that we see in newer buildings that older buildings don't always have and they're things that aren't really feasible to change. That does not mean that they can't get certified or that they shouldn't try. It's just a thing to look out for because some of those strategies, about 70% actually are based around the design of the building. So it is important to look at when your building was built and how it was built. 
Yeah, and uh, another good point from, from one of our colleagues, uh, a lot of historic buildings usually located in core urban areas. Um, so there usually are pretty good benefits to be gained from um, sort of that dense urban environment, most specifically transit and walkability, uh, which are, are um, sort of key factors for, for fit well. So there are definitely trade-offs in any, in any certification program, and, and FitWell is no different. Um, but you know, finding the right pathway to to you know getting your building certified is uh, again a, a somewhat of a straightforward process once you understand the concepts and and what to focus on. <clears throat> okay, uh, keep those questions coming. This is this is great. We've got a, a good list going here. Um, the next question is, um, is FitWell, actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to confirm this real quick. Let's say is FitWell not more appropriate for companies? Okay. Is FitWell not more appropriate for companies than it is for multi-tenant office buildings? And I think what I'm reading into that question is, um, is FitWell not more appropriate for a single tenant building or an owner-operated building than for multi-tenant office buildings? Uh, if I've gotten your question wrong, I, I do apologize, and please feel free to, to correct me via the chat feature. Um, go ahead. Right. So there is a single tenant um, scorecard, so it's not necessarily wor – how is that stated? Worse? Or uh, basically, it's asking are there, is there a difference between a single tenant yeah. building so, versus a multi-tenant yeah, building? Yeah, so we show the multi-tenant scorecard, but there is a single tenant scorecard. And it does um, cover the same strategies, but um, yeah, definitely do not be discouraged by just certifying your company, your space. So um, definitely it's a good feature too if your building is not certified to kind of show that our company wants to certify and then show, give them ideas on how the entire building could be certified as well to kind of start from the ground up at a smaller scope. Right. Yeah, again, one of the, one of the core principles of the fill program is that it's it's um, very all-encompassing and they, they try not to restrict too much you'll find that some property types are maybe more um, suited better suited for it but um, but there's no distinction between the tenant structure good um, here's a great question uh, and maybe this gets at some of the things that Aaron was talking about with the alternative paths we don't have food options in our building. What's the best I can do for that category? So, yep, there is a lot of alternative compliance for that section, and a lot of it has to do with whether or not you have healthy food options close to your building, within walking distance of your building. And if you do, you can get partial credits for those. If you don't, then those are just going to be points that you aren't able to achieve. But my guess is that you have food nearby and that as long as that follows the guidelines set in FitWell, you should be able to achieve some points there. Yeah, again, thinking backing on the concept that we're emphasizing that there are no prerequisites within their program, so it's fairly open-ended. Yep. Plenty of other points to make up for that. Good. Um, I'm going to go back a couple of slides here. I think that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. um, the there we go. There's a question about are there cutoffs or annual deadlines for certification or rather submissions for FitWell? And um, again, what does Gobi's timeline look like? This question may have come in before we got to this slide, but just to emphasize, um, there are no rolling deadlines throughout the year for FitWell. It's a wide open uh, submittal cycle um, that is completely uh, customizable depending on where you're at in the process and and, and what works for your budgets and um, resources. Gobi's timeline again is on screen and the timeline, and actually Ali answered this question just a minute ago as well about the overall, how long does it take? The one point maybe we can dive into just a little bit more here is this, this uh, concept of candidate selection. We mentioned earlier that there is a, a feature with the FitWell program that allows you to benchmark within their portal. Um, there are, besides their tools, there are a number of other strategies strategies you can use, some of which were outlined in the last slide that Aaron reviewed, 
talking about how to figure out if your building is a good candidate, location, age, et cetera. Um, so that candidate selection process can come really at any point in the year, uh, whether you're budgeting for future um, investments or trying to figure out what to do with this year's effort, you can work with us to essentially review your entire portfolio and identify those candidates that might, again, be best suited to do fit well immediately. Um, the timeline isn't increased uh, significantly for that effort, uh, but once we have a good idea of which buildings to focus on, you can start to apply these principles and these strategies relatively quickly. Okay, next question. Um, <clears throat> Aside from adding amenity space, what are some mandatory or at least commonly seen costs associated with Fitwell? Um, I think one of the best ones to go about doing, just because they're, in my, my eyes, easy points, is to do a bunch of the signage. So that's a low cost. I think adding plants to your space one, I love plants, but two, that's a lower cost too, rather than adding a whole new section of your building, just trying to go for some of those costs that you can add on. Um, the stairwell design, there's a feature in there that you can add music or lighting or certain pictures like on the walls of your stairwells and that can give you a credit rather than trying to switch your stairwell to be more centralized, which isn't realistic. So going for the non necessarily design based ones that you don't have to change the whole structure of your building but can highlight things like the signage or washing your hands stuff like that good okay. this is a good one this is a question i had very early on with fitwell <laughs> uh how does certification differ for existing buildings versus new construction There really isn't, they don't have in the sense that there's a new building, an existing building and a new building scorecard or anything. It's more that if you're designing a building, take a look at the scorecard and use these ideas while you're designing. They don't have a different way to rate a building. It's really, it's meant to be more of a existing building certification system. And I think that in a lot of ways is because of well, which is pretty difficult for existing buildings and it's often seen for new construction. So it's kind of a compliment to well in that way. Yeah, and that goes back to <clears throat> the scoring system. Again, if you remember those one-star, two-star, three-stars, um, I'd say I don't have this for sure, but I would hazard a guess that most of the three-star certified buildings are ones that had the fit well or the well criteria in hand when they did their very first design charrette. Um, when they sat down with uh, architects and, and and owners and started to map out those program requirements, um, most likely they had those resources available. Uh, again, because there is a pretty significant portion of the program that is design based that is very difficult to modify after the building's you know up and people are actually using it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. The okay, here's an interesting question. How does lead compare to well and fit well? There are three, there are a few overlapping categories between lead well and fit well. Um, since the GBC, US GBC certifies or is a third party for lead and well, um, fit well, those overlap in a lot of categories, including water, air quality, and Outdoor. Outdoor space yeah. spaces. So with Fitwell, um, air quality is very important, um, outdoor spaces, but not necessarily the functionality of the water, so low water flow, things like that. Fitwell doesn't focus on those things, but it's definitely the access to water, the purity of water. Those are the things that are important in the Fitwell feature versus well and lead are more focused on the environmental impacts of water, air quality, lighting. But um, so Fitwell focuses on the occupant well-being and then well and lead focus on the environmental impact. I would almost say well is also 
occupant in a way. It's just testing to a higher quality the yeah. way LEED does. That's true. So it's at well is more of the individual occupant yeah. and fit well is the public health mm -hmm. general occupant. Mm -hmm. I would take that question a step further too and talk about how, you know, we're talking about comparisons between established programs. Um, one of the ones that we touched on a bit was the, um, you know, the overlap with big portfolio certifications, or I'm sorry, benchmarkings like GRES. Um, the health and wellness aspects that are being looked at much more closely in big picture ESG frameworks are really encapsulated in well and fit well. So if, you've, if anyone on the call today is, um, you know, responsible for working on GREDS for their organization, they'll be familiar with the health and wellness sections uh, or the risk assessment sections of that program. Um, so there is a lot of synergy there where they're trying to capitalize on the uh, sort of early stages of these wellness programs that really weren't covered in depth previously. LEAD, for all of its positives, doesn't do a whole lot to directly address health and wellness. They approach it really primarily from an air quality perspective and a, a green clean perspective, um, which you know are very important aspects. But obviously, with the FitWell program, you see there are, are a number of others that are, are just as important. Um, another thing that to, to mention to the group is that there is the connection between LEED and WELL. They are both USGBC programs. Um, FitWell is also partners with BRIAM, uh, which is a, uh, an organization that's been around for, for quite a while um, in Europe. Um, you know, originally started out of the UK and launched a US arm uh, about two years ago, um, followed just this past November by an announcement of the partnership with FitWell. So um, there is a, a bit of a... Uh, 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 Competitive collaboration, um, um, which a, a colleague of mine told me once, um, or maybe he said collaborative competition, that sounds better, um, between these groups. And they definitely have different mindsets and different approaches, but in the end, a lot of the principles are very similar. Okay, next <clears throat> is the building list in the FitWell portal generally available to the public, i.e., is there a map of all FitWell certified projects? I don't believe there is. No, but I think they are providing access to the portal um, to the public. So there won't, right now it's only ambassadors and champions that have access to the portal, um, but it will be opened up to the teams of the portfolios, I believe. So as far as, team. as far as, a general, somebody in the general public who is not affiliated with a FitWell certified building, they wouldn't necessarily be able to, yep. to go in and see a list of I don't buildings so, that are. But yeah, okay. but if they're on the team of the management company or the ownership company, they will receive access. Okay, so it sounds like it's controlled access, not necessarily yeah. um, wide open general access to the public but at large. And to, to the more specific question, I don't believe right now you can find a list of FitWell certified projects. Um, it's something we searched for quite a bit. In fact, I was searching before the webinar started today. Um, and it's not currently available on the FitWell website, but I'm sure they will address that need in the future. <clears throat> Next question. Uh, is FitWell well recognized in the tenant representation leasing market? Uh, Along those lines, is there evidence that certification impacts, I'm sorry, is there evidence that certification impacts leasing decisions or rent levels? Um, are you, I'm not sure if this question is regarding the signage, like Lee, do you have a plaque on the um, door? So if this is what it's referring, yes. Um, once you receive a star rating, you will you will see, you will receive a, you could receive a plaque with the number of stars, is that not? No, I think what this is getting at is is how does, the the uh, presence of one of these certifications at a building affect the leasing potential for that building or affect what they can charge for rents in that property. Okay. There's a lot of study about this really primarily in the green building certification realm over the last 10 years. Um, there have been some great studies by um, 
you know, somebody whose name is now escaping me. But if you go on and find uh, uh, the costs of lead revisited, that's probably the, the one that I was, is cited most frequently. Um, I'll, I'll reference that only because I haven't seen uh, new studies looking at this specifically, but I think they're very related. So I think we can kind of borrow the results from that. And the results do show that um, buildings that have, that carry um, sustainability related or ESG related certifications uh, are able to command uh, higher uh, rent rates and um, do typically have uh, a more robust leasing situation. Um, that's a, kind of a vague answer for that. But I think really what you can take away from it is that um, in today's climate, and Allie touched on a slide about millennials uh, during our presentation, where um, the you know they said that you know out of the current group or crop of people that are filling up our workforce, I think 51% of millennials talked about wanting to um, be in buildings that that uh, prioritize these concepts, um, as opposed to I think 41%. There it is, 41% of um, of baby boomers. So the the thing the takeaway here is that companies that are primarily um, more focused with younger um, participants in the workforce, especially technology companies, um, are are routinely looking for leasing opportunities that already have these things in place. Um, some of the big ones that everyone on the call would recognize don't hesitate to spend the money to get the buildings in those situations. You may have been following a, a headquarters search that currently occupies a pretty good chunk of the news cycle um, for a big a big company along those lines. But they want to see um, uh, opportunities that that already have these these uh, different types of programs established. A to you know reduce their own cost, but B to keep the branding. They want to show their workforce, their employees that they continue to prioritize these different concepts um, as part of their overall mission. Okay, how are we doing on time? Okay, <clears throat> next question. Um, what do you think will happen to LEED when these new programs make it to market? It's a really interesting question. Um, you know, I don't think that these programs will supplant LEED. Um, I think especially since WELL and LEED are uh, really under the same roof, I think you'll start to see more synergies develop, more overlap between the programs. Uh, I know that LEAD right now is working on developing their LEAD V4.1, version 4.1, which I don't think is intended to incorporate any of these wellness concepts, but, you know, these, these rating systems change on a regular basis. They're on a three-year cycle right now, and, um, you know, who knows where that will take it. As far as FitWell is concerned, again, I don't think that properties will be choosing FitWell over LEAD because they represent very different concepts. FitWell doesn't address um, resource efficiency in any way, uh, energy and water. Um, it also doesn't address um, sort of the bigger picture of, you know, overall building performance. It's really more, again, as Ali and Aaron emphasized, um, it's really more emphasized on the, on the human experience, whereas LEED is more about building performance. So, I think they're very different systems uh, that will find a good way to coexist. Great question here. Is the added cost of well really worth the expense? I say yes. <laughs> Tell us, Aaron. Well, I well is proven to benefit your occupants in a way that even like lowering your CO2 level in your space by just a bit increases your cognitive function and your productivity. And that, you can't make that, there's no price on that. I mean, it's really, <laughs> in my opinion, I mean, I see it being something that single tenant buildings look at more just because they care more about how those tenants are doing because they're, they're employees. But I think it's important. I think 
it should be used more, and I hope it does. Um, yeah, definitely worth the added cost, especially because it's not – because with these certifications of three years, um, it definitely you'll see – it's it's kind of similar to buying an Energy Star appliance. It's expensive at first, but then you see the positive outcomes from getting that energy efficient appliance because you know that you're – um, you're actually saving lower costs, um, and it's kind of like a trickle effect of buying one really expensive thing, but then it has several um, great aspects of that first purchase. So, yeah, absolutely. I think Well and Fitwell both hit different app strategies, so getting both would be great um, because they do benefit, ultimately benefit the people in your building which is very important. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll add to, I think you could see a scenario where entities start to use the well criteria in much the same way that many have used the lead for new construction criteria or lead for commercial interiors where they will, um, and I don't remember, I can't remember if there's USGBC reps on the call, but they probably won't like me saying this. But uh, the reality of it is that a lot of entities will design to lead criteria. You'll see that a lot as footnotes in marketing materials or, or reports where they won't actually go through the process of certification, but they will study the concepts in the, in the guidelines and use them when making their decisions. I think with well, you'll see a similar trend. Um, it's just in many cases, again, the reality of it is with the current version, version 1.0 for well, um, the costs are prohibitive for a, a a, a, a number of clients. For some, they're not, and they're they're ready and willing to um, to jump in and be leaders in that space. Especially since there aren't that many um, existing commercial office buildings that are well certified right now. So some want to be in that leading edge, and they're willing to make the investment. Um, others may um, find Fitwell uh, as a a reasonable alternative, which I really do think it is, and um, decide to you know maybe go with Fitwell and then add a little gravy by following some of the, the well uh, concepts, which um, fit well does not follow to the same extent. So I think you might start to see some hybrid approaches uh, put in place by very creative teams. Okay, um, we have one more question here. Um, or time for one more question, I should say. Uh, is there market demand for the FitWell program? I think that the fact that we have 116 participants on today's webinar, um, I think it's a pretty good sign that there is some interest and some market demand on uh, uh, for for that program. Um, it's obviously gained a lot of traction over the last 12 months, and um, I think that's well deserved. Uh, you know, the program itself is still relatively new. Um, there was a question somewhere I think that asked about, you know, how, how is it perceived in the marketplace? It's still gaining that foothold. All right, you know, I, let me rephrase that. I think it's gained the foothold. I think now they're starting to climb. Um, there's a lot of uh, large companies, especially in the U.S., who have made Fitwell part of their strategy for the next. Uh, you know, two to three years, and they're starting to implement along those lines. So um, I do think there's market demand. I think it's going to continue to grow. Um, but there is, like I said, there's good um, competitive, or uh, I always say this wrong, co competitive collaboration <laughs> with the folks over at Well. Um, I think once we see their Well version 2.0, which will be coming out in the very near future, and see what changes they made to adjust to the realities of, of their market, I think we'll start to see um, the market uh, start to kind of resolve itself and figure out which programs are going to um, be most successful. Okay, I think that's all the time that we have for questions today. Again, the recession is being recorded and we will make it available to um, all attendees. If any questions weren't answered, Please feel free to reach out to us um, at uh, info at gobyinc.com. That's gobyinc.com. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to follow up with those 
with those answers. Our contact information is also being shown on screen right now. Um, on behalf of Gobi and Fitwell, uh, we want to thank all of you for sharing your time and, uh, and participating with us today. And uh, again, if you have any additional questions or follow-up, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at gobiinc.com. Thank you all. Have a great day.